Will Europe produce or buy new technologies to tackle environmental and health challenges? Efficient and non-toxic lighting. Low-cost solar cells for ubiquitous energy generation. Selective and sensitive medical and environmental sensors. Energy-efficient electronic papers. To produce new technologies, Europe needs to invest in research and to translate research results into products. This will result in a growth of innovative industries, creating jobs and welfare. One P is the European research project pushing the borders in the field of new materials for lighting, solar cells, transistors and sensors. We can follow the evolution of industrial societies and human societies following how people have used, modified and now developed, realized materials. Materials are an evolution, are a revolution that help the competitiveness of the products in Europe and help the sustainability of our industrial economy. Let's think about stone in the past, let's think about iron, about copper before iron, bronze, iron, ceramics, textiles, um, uh, silicon. Let's think about nanotechnologies, about converging technologies. Materials are essential for the future of Europe and the research and innovation in material is essential for the competitiveness of the European products and for the sustainability of the European industrial economy. Silicon is the basic component in computers. It's also the active component for photovoltaic solar cells. The production of silicon for solar cells and transistors is laborious, energy consuming and costly. Purifying and crystallizing silicon is the most energy-intensive process of manufacturing solar panels. The silicon panel is also fragile and breaks easily. Imagine that instead of silicon, we use plastic. The solar cell would become flexible, thin, lightweight and produced by a cost-effective printing process. Organic solar cells based on carbon atoms are easy to process and require only a minimum amount of material and energy for their production. Compared to standard silicon solar cells, organic cells are able to collect light of low intensity, working earlier in the day and later in the evening, earlier and later in the year. They could thus also be used indoors to replace batteries in TV remote control. Compared to standard silicon solar cells, organic cells are also less sensitive to the angle and could therefore be used in curtains or wallpapers. Organic materials are very attractive materials because they can be tailored to the required properties. Indeed, the number of possible structures is infinite and each modification in molecular structure or in molecular packing gives rise to new properties. I'm drowning! Help! Help! Rescue me! Come here! I need help! Imagine now that this plastic transports electrical charges. We can use them to produce very low power consumption complementary circuits, electronic papers, 
more energy efficient than conventional newspapers. Low-cost RFID tags for logistics to avoid food waste. To provide sensors for health and environment monitoring. The 1P project for organic nanomaterials for electronics and photonics covers all the aspects of materials, synthesis, characterization and evaluation and therefore requires a multidisciplinary approach. 200 researchers from 28 organizations are involved. Theoretical chemists, synthetic chemists, physicists, engineers, from academia, research centers, SMEs and large industries. From Italy, UK, Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands. The best experts from complementary fields on a European scale. This project, co-funded by the European Community's 7th Framework Programme, is developing materials and processing for tomorrow's electronic and photonic applications. Are we ready for the future?